Well, we recommend a balanced, healthy diet and exercise and to maintain a good body weight, obviously, that's all a bit of a given. Mm. Um, it's, and it, a balanced diet should be able to have you know, oily fish, um, lots of vegetables, fruit, etc. Mm. Uh, there are certain things you can avoid which might stimulate hot flashes, etc. So caffeine, reducing caffeine intake mm -hmm. can, have a, um, a, can help with that. And also reducing alcohol intake. A lot of women comment that their hot flashes are much, much better if they, do, if they avoid that. But, that, mm. but not all women will find that yeah. avoiding those things helps very much. You know, but as Nick says, everyone's an individual. Mm. So it's a bit mm. of a sort of trial and error for different women. What about sugar? As in, uh, the buzzword at the moment seems to be cutting, cutting back sugar to avoid any kind of spikes, whether it's a hormone spike, an energy spike. Mm. So the basis to that is that uh, with the menopause, uh, women's resistance to the effects of insulin rises. Mm -hmm. um, and this means you need high levels of insulin to control your blood sugar. And therefore there are greater fluctuations in your sugar levels anyway. Okay. And because the metabolism of sugar becomes more difficult, then if you, if you take uh, excess sugar, then that can actually induce quite significant fluctuations in the neurotransmitters in the brain, uh, serotonin uh, and something called GABA as well, and this can uh, lead to fluctuations in mood. And the most important thing is that if we are going to take carbohydrates, that they're complex carbohydrates, brown, low glycemic index as we uh, call it, carbs, mm -hmm. that uh, aren't going to lead to these fluctuations in the blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that my patients for both PMS and menopause benefit very much from keeping their, their, their blood sugar levels constant. Mm -hmm. Rather than these Rather than, in, yes. yes. So you're, with with uh, rapid ingestion of sugar, mm -hmm. you might temporarily feel well, but then as the levels come crashing down, so do those neurotransmitters, and so you feel worse rather than better. Mm -hmm. um, it, sorry, it can also lead to um, fat deposits around the middle, so people mm -hmm. get this midriff bulge, mm -hmm. and they often come in and complain about that and say, since I've become perimenopausal, postmenopausal, I've put on weight around my middle, never look yes. like this, always it's have very, a been very inelegantly referred to as a spare tire of middle youth. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> yes, and, and, right. But it's not, it shouldn't be an inevitable thing, no. because again, if we can get that insulin resistance down mm -hmm. through an appropriate diet, and actually use of uh, appropriate hormone therapy as well can help that, mm -hmm. then um, you can maintain your normal sort of body shape. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the sort of hard effort that goes into maintaining that mm. exercise um, and uh, you know watching the diet etc yeah. pays greater dividends mm. when, when, when you're actually doing the right yes. things. The insulin levels and the estrogen levels are quite closely linked aren't they? And, yes. and when the estrogen levels drop down the insulin levels have to go up higher to control the blood sugar. Okay. So we get something called insulin resistance or metabolic Syndrome. So supplementing with estrogen actually makes you yeah. more sensitive, it's, okay. insulin sensitive. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And in fact, uh, there are studies that show that mm -hmm. the incidence of diabetes is re reduced by mm -hmm. the right type of HRT.